there's the emotional component of the divorce. So we feel like we're at war. There's limited resources. We feel like we should fight over the resources. The other person is the enemy, even though they're the mother or father of our children. Well, they can't get it emotionally. So how do they get it? They get it by fighting for a piece of furniture. They get it by fighting over money. Welcome to another episode of Rich in Relationship. And we are here today to talk about divorce dollars, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Charting your financial course through choppy water. So last episode, we talked all about kids, right? Now we're going to talk about the other very sensitive topic, which is money. And oddly, you would think, like, why is money so sensitive, right? There's a, we can always make more. And we're going to talk about just why that is. Why is money the thing that people fight about so intensely besides custody and parenting time? So let me paint a picture for you. Divorce is the second most stressful occurrence in life after death of a loved one. All right. And I think if we really took into account that the third most stressful thing in life happens in divorce, nine times out of 10, which is moving, it might become number one. This is just survey results. I mean, divorce is a seriously stressful and for many people, traumatic experience. Now, what we know about people when they're going through trauma is they don't feel safe. Okay. Now, as creatures, as animals, let's call it, our natural reaction to not feeling safe is to protect our resources. When we don't feel safe, when we feel threatened, the first thing we do is we make sure that we're okay. Am I safe? Am I going to be attacked? Am I physically okay? The next thing we do is we start being concerned about our future. Am I going to have enough money for my future, for my kids? I can't trust him because he's divorcing me. I can't trust her because she slapped me with a divorce. I can't trust them. So we get very, uh, I'm gonna, we get very protective about, about ourselves and our children and very distrustful of the other person. And it makes sense because the system of divorce is set up as two people fighting over limited resources. That's how it's set up. Now, there have been a lot of workarounds to that, like mediation and collaborative divorce that help bring change the tone. Uh, And there are firms that are looking to change the way people divorce so that it starts to feel more like a life transformation and less like warfare. And there's resistance to that, right? Uh, Some of the resistance has to do with um, marital vows should be taken seriously. We can't make it easy for people to get divorced because then everyone will, right? I mean, that's one point of view. It's kind of an old school point of view. But the fact of the matter is, if two people are not willing to work through whatever the challenge is, if one of the two people is just done and won't work through whatever the challenge is, if they're willing to go back on their vows, it's not up to the legal system to uphold that. That's between the two people and their maker, if they believe they have one. The legal system is not the vehicle for enforcing morality in the case of marriage. At least that's my belief. In fact, my belief is anytime that we use the legal system to enforce morality, we end up with uh, extremes like um, the Salem witch hunt (laughs) might be an, an extreme. Well, some people might argue they were really witches. I don't know. All right, that's a whole nother podcast. So where we were is, it feels like warfare because the legal system sets it up that way. And to make it even worse, there's an efficiency that comes with two people living and working together. So naturally, when people get divorced, expenses go up by at least 50%, maybe more. Right, the efficiency of two people living under one roof destroyed by living under two. The efficiency of sharing electricity destroyed. The efficiency of meals together destroyed. 
the efficiency of tax deductions, marital tax deductions, ex destroyed, right? Expenses go up. You have a, two people who have been living relatively efficiently financially. They're not getting along. When people don't get along, they tend to spend more money than they have. And so the chances are they're e living hand to mouth and in debt, depending on where they are financially. That isn't always true, but it's true a good deal of the time. And then there's this third factor. There's the emotional component of the divorce itself. So we feel like we're at war. There's limited resources. We feel like we should fight over the resources. The other person is the enemy, even though they're the mother or father of our children. And we lose sight of the fact that after the divorce, we're still going to have to deal with them. We lose sight of the fact that it is in our children's best interest for us to get along with that person. We lose sight of the fact that when the divorce is over, we're still going to have a lot of the same problems that we had while we were married. The only difference is we're going to be able to go to our corners. We lose sight of those things and we fight. Then there's the unresolved emotions. Very often in divorce, one or both people feels like their needs were not met in the marriage and they're upset. They feel cheated. They feel their trust was broken and they want to get what they didn't get out of that other person. Well, they can't get it emotionally. So how do they get it? They get it by fighting for a piece of furniture. They get it by fighting over money. They get it by losing sight of what's really important, which is what we talked about last episode, the children. So let's assume that we've gotten past all that. Before, before we assume that we've gotten past all that, let me tell you how to get past all that. There's a five-step process. The first step is that you clean up your side of the street or have some level of repentance for your own misdeeds, regardless of how good or bad the other person was. Right? The first step is to take 100% responsibility for the marriage ending, even if you don't have 100% responsibility, because it's more empowering. It helps us move out of feeling like a victim when we take responsibility. We can be victims, but we don't want to feel like victims endlessly. So the first step is to take responsibility, to clean our side of the street. The next step is to forgive ourselves first, for ourselves for failing, because we own part of the failure, and them for failing. And also to let go, forgive and let go. Let go of the dream that, that has been shattered. Let go of the hurt. Let go of the sadness. Let go of the fear. We're, that's the second step. The third step is the secret weapon is called compassion. All right, we're gonna understand why they did what they did, why they act the way they do. And we're gonna understand how our behavior, which we learn more about in the second step, might've triggered them and we're through that lens of uh, compassion and understanding, we're going to move on to step four, which is we're going to create a strategy that's a win-win for everyone involved. Why? Because if they lose, the children lose. If I lose, the children lose. If we lose, the children lose. And we cannot have the children lose. They are our greatest asset, our greatest creation, and the thing that most people will die for. And then step five is we're going to create a network of support to help us through that. And that's kind of what this podcast is all about, is it's giving you the basis for support. It's giving you the strategies you need for support. So let's assume that you have exercised those five steps and that you, the past is now the past and that you are looking forward with a clear mind and an understanding that he, she is going to, they are going to need to eat also, that when the children are at their house, they will need to be comfortable there as well, that when the children are being driven by them, that they're going to need to be in a safe vehicle, that when they are involved with the children, that they're going to need to feel like they got at least as bad a deal as we did. All right? We don't want to screw them and we don't want to feel screwed. We want to feel equally screwed. Let's assume that we have that awareness. Now we're going to assess our financial situation in the divorce process. Now, to some extent, our attorneys help us with that. They help us with that by having us go through our financials. What are our assets? What are our liabilities? Were there any finances that were premarital assets that weren't mingled in the marriage? Because those might be mine or they might be theirs, all right? And we're going to accept that. What about retirement funds? How much money was put in the retirement fund while we were together? How much of that is mine? How much of that is yours? Or what am I willing to give up for you to have that? Or what are you give up, willing to give up for me to have this? I'll tell you a story. When my first wife and I got divorced, I had my own business 
And she had, uh, but I didn't have a retirement fund, by the way, because I didn't have that kind of foresight. I put everything I had into that business. And she worked for the city and had a nice, healthy f retirement fund. And the agreement that we came to, because we had the understanding that both of us needed to have a foundation with which to support our children, was that she would keep all of her retirement fund and that I would keep all of my business. Right? And she knew I didn't have hidden assets. She trusted that. And I honestly didn't care what she had in her retirement fund in the 10 years that we were living together because she earned that in my point of, from my point of view. Right? We had gone through the five steps adequately enough so that we could come to that kind of agreement. And our divorce occurred within a nine-month time span as a result. So assessing and understanding your financial situation and being willing to compromise and dissolve your assets equitably is huge in making it go quickly. And let me tell you that when you can do your divorce in nine months instead of two years, you save a lot of money. Both of you do. You want to understand the legal considerations. You want to understand, is there going to be alimony? Is there going to be child support? You want to understand how that's done. You want to understand the legal backdrop. Uh, we went to a mediator and the mediator said, you don't need to understand the legal backdrop. You're going to work this out yourselves. But I was like, no, I need to know the legal backdrop. And so does she. It's the only way we're going to feel like this is fair. And so we wanted to understand the legal backdrop when we went to the mediator. The mediation still failed. We ended up going to litigate the final piece of the divorce. You want to start to think about what's your budget or spending plan going to be post-divorce? And I'm going to tell you that when you look at that, you're going to be like, oh my God, why are we doing this? How can, I, how can we afford to live separately? In a lot of ways, getting divorced is kind of like buying your first home. If you haven't done it, it goes like this. You go out to look at homes in your price range. And inevitably, you end up buying something that's a little outside of your price range. That's a stretch for you. And you do it because you know that it's going to be a more comfortable and better place for your family. Well, getting divorced financially is a lot like that. You're going to be stretching financially. You're going to be finding ways to save money so that you can pay for this. You're going to be looking for new ways to earn more. That's just part of the deal. Get over the sticker shock and move forward. It's really helpful to have coaches, therapists, lawyers, financial advisors, financial planners. If you do not have a clue about stocks, bonds, uh, 401ks, you want to learn about that. It's a great resource if you don't know anything about that is family kind is a resource um another resource is um uh, what's the name of the organization i'll put it in the notes but there's there's our, our not-for-profits dedicated to helping women in particular understand finances there are lots of resources out there the biggest challenge may be dividing up debt and um i'm going to encourage you to view it this way even if they were spending their buns off and you're liable for that debt, you need to understand that you're liable for that debt. And as upsetting as it may be, that's part of the pain of getting divorced. Now, if you're not liable for that debt, you may want to help them with it anyway. Why, you ask? Why? Why would a help that spendaholic anyway? Well, it goes back to the basic principle of your children are going to be living where? Not only with you, but with them. And if they're going to be living with them and they're carrying a boatload of debt and can't pay it, it's not going to be good over there. You want to do your best to protect your credit store scores. And if you don't have a credit score, now is a good time to establish one. Go out and get a credit card right now in your name. If every all the credit was in their name, go out and get a credit card in your name. Do something to start having a credit score because it's a useful tool to have. I'm not encouraging you to go into debt, but one day you may want to buy a property, which is secured debt, and it might be worthwhile to be able to borrow money for secured debt. I'm not saying go out and have a lot of unsecured debt like visas and MasterCards. I am encouraging you to get one and not use it much so that you at least start to have a credit rating. All right, we are near the end here, I want to encourage you, if you're having fighting a lot over money, 
uh, think about getting a mediator involved to get in there with you and talk you both through it. It might be that you both have lawyers who meet with you both and the mediator, but often a mediator has the skills and abilities to help two people negotiate in a way that the individual attorneys don't. And I want you to share your financial tips for getting divorced and your stories. Comment or email me, rich at rich in relationship. Direct message me if you're on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok. Reach out to us and let us know what's going on. Subscribe and share this with other people going through the divorce process. And we are doing a special workshop in February. Looks like three or four of them with experts in this area. Please tune in and learn more. It'll be up on our websites. It'll be out on social media. You'll see it out there. Reach out to me personally, rich at rich relationship.com. I'll make sure that you have access because you can't miss this. We're going to be bringing in experts to help with what the legal backdrop is when you are moving through the financial part of your divorce, which often, as we pointed out, is very sticky.